Nice to meet you all. Nice Hi. to meet you too, Lizzie. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Um, so your session is from 12.50, sorry, from 12.20 to 12.50. Um, yep. And we'd really appreciate you giving us a demonstration of your, your solution's core capability around the care planning. Yep. Um, and also within that time, obviously allow some time for um, questions as well, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. We're that's also recording fine. this session, if that's all right with you, Lizzie, because we appreciate not all of our five's been able to join today. So, um, yeah, we're recording the session so we can share those um, with obviously people who are on the call, but also other providers who are unable to join today. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Brilliant. Are we waiting for anybody else or should we should we start? How does? I think we're good to start. We're good to start. Right. Perfect. Lizzie, I will hand Great. over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my name's Lizzie. I work for Care Control. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very brief presentation about who we are, where we've come from. Um, there's a couple of areas that I do want to show you guys today. I want to show you a little bit about our insights area. Um, you can use this for running your reports and I'll also show you how staff can use the system as well. So just bear with me whilst I stop sharing the camera and share my screen. Hopefully you can all see my screen OK. So um, a little bit about care control, who we are and where we've come from. We're not just an electronic system um, that's seen a niche in the market and decided we can build a system for, for care. Um, we actually come from a care background. So uh, we were built for a care home down in Devon. The managing director, Matt Luckham, he has worked for multi-million pound IT companies. His parents have always owned care homes. Um, and when his mum decided she was going to retire, Matt decided to move back to Devon and take on the running of the home. So instead of losing the care home, he decided to come back and run the care home. At the time, we were still recording on paper. And I say we because I was actually working for the home at the time. So we were still recording on paper. Um, Matt spent two weeks following us around, watching us write on notes and hoping that the next member of staff was going to read it. And he was like, hang, stop, guys, stop, stop, stop. There's got to be like a better way of recording care that you're providing. So he went and built care control for his own care home. Moving forward, we've now got over 100 years care experience working here at Care Control. Um, a lot of staff from Matt's care home now work here at Care Control. So when you're going through your implementation process, the staff that you're talking to have used Care Control in a care setting before. OK. We do support all service types, so we have expanded and we support all service types now. We are approved by CQC and we are on the NHS X assured list. Last year, we had over 37,000 staff using the system every day. Um, that resulted in 225,000 care notes being recorded in a 24 hour period. So we've gone from 20 care professionals, 20 carers using this system to 37,000 staff using the system. We support over 700 care providers across the UK. To support Care Control's growth, we have doubled the size of the team here at Care Control. So you can just see how well Care Control has grown and taken off. We're really proud of where we are today. Our keystones to your success. We are one business in one place. Staff record real time information, which means it's immediately available. Perfect for if you're working from home, you can still see what's going on in the care home. If you're a domiciliary setting, you know, if you're working in the office, you can still see what's being recorded by your care staff that are working out on the field. The system is customizable. Now we have monitoring built into care control. There are risk assessment templates. There's consents, mental capacity. But if you have your own risk assessment that you're currently using and you want to continue using that so it's familiar for staff, that's fine. You can build it into the system. OK, same as um, consents, mental capacity assessments. If you have a template you're using, you can build that into care control. 
We do have a communication area, a um, bit like an internal WhatsApp group. So you can send messages to staff, staff can send messages back to you. Perhaps you need to get a message to a group of staff. So that's fine. You can create groups of staff as well. So what we do, we are a comprehensive system. We can support you with care planning, medication, rota, payroll, HR, compliance, income management, business intelligence, family support and security. So we do have a friends and family app. Um, brilliant for making sure that friends and family are kept up to date with what's being recorded for their loved one's care. Security, we have our ISO 27001 certificate. Now, all of these areas that you can see here come with care control. OK, you don't have to purchase additional package for your medication. It's a one stop shop where you get the whole lot and you decide how much of it you want to use. If you want to use it in its entirety, great. If you only want to use care control for care planning, maybe, and a few other areas, again, that's absolutely fine. So who do we work with? We work with residential homes and nursing homes, domiciliary care agencies, supported living services. We do support a few children's homes and colleges. You can see the specialisms that we can support with care control. And in the very bottom right hand corner there, there's some of our current customers that use care control. So how are we gonna use care control? For your staff that are working on the, in the field for domiciliary, they can use their own smartphone devices. They will be able to see who they are working, um, working with. OK, so they'll be able to see their rotor. When they arrive at a client's house, they'll be able to check in, carry out the tasks, check out, move on to the next client. For care homes, staff can have um, care control pocket on a smartphone. I wouldn't suggest they use their own phones in a in a in a care home setting. GDPR. Um, but yeah, you can have care control on a smartphone. Brilliant for carers that are on the go all the time. They've just got the device in their pocket. So once they've carried out an area of care, they can remove the device, record what they've carried out, put the device back on their pocket, move on to their next task. We also have care control for tablets. In a care home setting, tablets are great for doing your medication, your care plans, risk assessments. You can also take a tablet out to carry out remote pre-assessments. For domiciliary, again, seniors or team leaders can take a tablet out with them to do care reviews, risk assessments and a pre-assessment. And then we've got care control for PC. Now that's the area that the managers would have to be able to set all their management tasks and have an overview of the running of the business. There's a few words here from the, some of the current customers that use care control. Um, if you don't mind, I know we've only got 30 minutes, so I'm not gonna sit and, sit and read out the quotations, but they are available on the uh, website if you want to have a, have a look at the quotes. We do have Care Control Insights. Now, this is brilliant for running your reports, OK? It's web based. It can have a look at single site or group level. So if you've got more than one business that are using Care Control, that's fine. As a manager or as an owner, you can log in and have a look at the, all the sites that you've currently got, OK? Um, if you're on a single site level, again, that's absolutely fine. You can log in and you'll be able to see your one um, care, uh, care provider. Now, with regards to insights, you can really drill down so you can have a look at site or group level, but you can also drill it down to an individual client or staff level as well. It's your data in real time. So with regards to implementation, like I said, most of the staff that work here in with in implementation have used care control before in care settings. OK. You will receive four weeks implementation. That's included. Our implementation is carried out via Microsoft Teams. Now, that's brilliant because we can record the sessions. We can send you videos of the sessions afterwards. So you've got the video to look back on 
you know, you may not be able to complete the implementation that we've shown you today. Um, so you might want to look at that tomorrow. So you've got the video that you can always look back on. If you wanted to purchase additional training packages, that's absolutely fine. You can do. Four weeks is perfect for getting your care plans up, up, up and running. If you're a domiciliary service, the four weeks is perfect for getting your rotor up and having a look at your monitoring and your care plans for your clients. We have a return on investment area. Um, our customers will use cost of care analysis for fee justifications and fee reviews. The system can track and measure your service user complexity and let you know how much that client is costing you per week. You would have to put your care costs and your non-care costs in, right? But then the system will be able to track and measure the complexity and give you a detailed fee calculation. The payroll analysis, we've had reports that that is saving customers between one and two percent on their payroll. Now, the way that we can do that is the, the system will have a look at the time staff are signing in to work and the time they're signing out. It, ha it has a look at the rotor and it highlights any discrepancies. So if a staff member was supposed to start work at eight o'clock, they sign into the system at 20 past. When you go to run your payroll, the system will highlight that discrepancy to you. So you've then got the option of paying the staff member from 20 past eight as the time that they signed in or from eight o'clock that they were supposed to sign in on the rotor. It's going to save so much time. OK, there is no more having to wait for staff to come to the office to record what they've done with their care. They can do it as they're going. Um, you know, you don't have to come into the office to find the information. It's available if you have to work from home because of, of the drama, you know, children going sick all the time. You know, you can still access that information from your laptop at home. There's a few words here from CQC. Uh, about care control. Again, if you don't mind, I won't read it to you. Um, it is available on the website though. And that's a presentation. The next area I'm going to take you through to is our insights page. So this is our new reporting area. This section is web based. So let me just sign in here a second. Bear with me. can't text and talk at the same time, so just bear with me two seconds. OK, so um, we, if we have a look at our care, for example, have a look at our incident analysis. OK, now I'm just going to show you our group metrics. So as we can see here, we've got three sites. So if you have a business with more than three, uh, with more than one home or one dom care business, OK, perhaps you're supporting dom care and supported living. You can have a look at all your sites under the one reporting page. Now, if you want to break this down, that's absolutely fine. We have got a filter so we can change it to an individual setting. Sorry, it's going to have to move you guys. There we go. Um, so you can have a look at an individual site as well. OK, with regards to your HR, perfect for having a look at your training for your staff. OK, so if I have a look at my training, I can see what training is now overdue. It's literally a case of a couple of clicks and I can see my training that is overdue for my staff. I can see what mandatory courses are now due for my staff. OK, and I can see how much of my training is up to date. Really useful tool, reporting tool. OK. So how do we get this information to our reporting tool? Let me just take you through and show you how staff would use care control. I'm going to demonstrate to you today the pocket device okay so i'm billy wood i'm signed into work this is my device throughout my shift i can see my clients that i'm supporting now if you're dom care you wouldn't see your service users laid out like this you would be able to see your rota and as you're arriving to clients houses you'll be able to check in and, and carry out the task let's say i'm supporting doreen today so as I click on Doreen, I've got Doreen's contact details at the top of the screen. I can see Doreen's room number. 
Now, I can also see the areas of monitoring that we need to support Doreen with. I can tell what's due because it's showing in an orange circle and I can tell what's overdue because it's highlighting in a red cross. So I can see that personal care has not been recorded for my client this morning. Easy to use. All I need to do is select that area of monitoring that I want to record. Mark the build button. Now we've got a couple of options here. We can either use the tick boxes, record the response. Now you can change these options to suit your to suit your care providing. The system's written the note for you. If staff want to add additional information, they can do. Now, anywhere that comes up with toast alert means that if the device staff are using has got the microphone option on the device, we do have that speech to text. OK, so this is what I've recorded for Doreen. Click save. That's been recorded. That's saved straight through to Doreen's care notes. You will notice that personal care has been removed from the list of tasks because it's been carried out. Now, this evening, if we're supporting Doreen tonight and she requires help with getting to bed, personal care will pop back up so staff can record what they've done this evening. Our areas of monitoring are linked to the care review, what we call care review on, on care control. So if I click on the care review tab in the bottom left hand corner, you will see that that is taking me through to Doreen's nutrition and hydration needs. I can see the level of support that's required for Doreen. I can see the present situation. I can also see how staff are going to support that service user. If the staff that are working on the field or on the floor feel that actually that level of need has changed, we have got propose a change request. Now it's not going to automatically change the care review. What it will do is it will come through to managers. So managers can see that staff feel that level of need has changed for a client. They can see what staff feel that they need to, how they need to support that client now. If the manager agrees with what the staff is proposing, they can authorise the uh, proposal and that will make the amendments partway through a care review. OK, I'm just going to record fluid just to show you how easy that is to record. OK, um, we've also got on care control, we have got general notes. OK, so if staff want to record an area, nothing to do with the monitoring areas that you've got assigned here for, for Doreen, could be just a general note. She's really happy. You've got your general note. You've got incident forms on here. Great if you're running your incident analysis. You've also got activities. OK, you can take a photo of activities being carried out with a client that will save straight through to their care notes. We also have a body map under health issues. Um, with regards to body maps and health issues, staff have also got the ability to take three photos. So if you are recording a health issue, perhaps it's a bruise, perhaps it's a skin tear, you know, staff can then take a photo of that health issue and add it to care control. So you have got a log. On the pocket device, we have got the care plan. So staff will be able to see the personal details of the service user. They can see the key contacts. They can view the care review for that client. With Care Control, the domains that you have for each of your clients, you can change. OK, so you can really person centre their care reviews. If you have a client who has diabetes or seizures, for example, you can create those domains and you can add them into care control. So you're really person centering their requirements. Staff will be able to view risk assessments on the pocket device. Now they can't complete them. OK, they can be viewed. The reason for that is the, the pocket device is designed for care staff, not your seniors, your team leaders. OK, now they can take tablets out to do risk assessments and care reviews. OK, we do have risk assessment templates on care control. However, like I said at the beginning, if you have a particular risk assessment that you still want to use, that's absolutely fine. You can build it into care control. That is part of the implementation process. We will show you how to do that. I did mention friends and family. 
Okay, so we do have the friends and family app. They can send photos through to the service user. I used um, this during COVID. It was a really great way of making sure that everybody stayed in contact. One of my service users became a great granddad for the first time. So his granddaughter downloaded uh, friends and family and was sending photos through of the baby to, to, the, to the service user that we were looking after, which was absolutely great, great way of keeping in touch. Any health issues will be stored under one section. We also have an area for checklists. Now for domiciliary, you may want checklists for shopping, for example. You may use checklists for cleaning. You know, if you're going to support a service user with cleaning, that's fine, you can create a cleaning checklist. Supported living, if you're encouraging service users to become a bit more independent, perhaps you're attending um, the library once a week with the client to change their books, you can create a checklist for that. And then finally, we have linked documents. So if you have any documents on file that you want to store for your service users, you can upload them and scan them into linked documents. If the linked documents that you have got are a little bit case sensitive, you can pop a password on those documents so that not all staff can be able to view them. Only those that actually know the password for those documents will be able to view. And the final thing that we have, well, there's two more areas that I do want to show you on the pocket device. We have facts. Now, this is having a look at the fast facts of the client. OK, um, within a care home setting, there's nothing more annoying than walking past the phone, answering the phone. It's a GP surgery wanting to know what a client's weight is, then having to go to the office to get that information to tell the receptionist. Um, with care control, we have facts so that easily highlights these areas, so the weight, you know, instead of having to go to the office to get that information, it's available on those devices that we've got in our pocket. You now we can see the weight. Is that going up? Is that going down? We've got a little arrow to show here. We can see how many falls the clients had, fluid intake, etc. Every time a staff records an area of monitoring, it saves to the client's notes. Now for domiciliary, the notes section will be your handover area. OK, um, you can have a look and you can see that everything that's been recorded by staff, it is date and time stamped along with the staff member's name. So as managers, you have an audit trail of what's being recorded. If you want to filter these areas, perhaps there's a particular phrase you're looking for, that's absolutely fine. You can pop a phrase section on there. And that is Care Control Pocket. Um, you've got your care planning on there. It's easy to use for your staff, as I've demonstrated today. I did mention at the very beginning that we have the messaging service. Any messages that come through to staff during their visits will be highlighted with a number. So I can see here I've got messages that I need to read. So we can come in, we can read these messages. We can also reply to messages if we need to. Any questions? Thank you very much, Lizzie. That was very comprehensive. Good. Um, That's my first webinar, so I was a little nervous. So I understand how all of you feel about going digital. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a very okay. comprehensive system. Um, and I think really based on that, uh, Ranji is asking, can you give us an idea of uh, pricing, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if Ramji wants to send me an email, I'm more than happy to share uh, the costings. Now, obviously, I need to know how many service users he's got, etc., so that I can really um, give him an accurate pricing. So if he okay. wants to get in contact, that's fine. All right. Could, could I ask just a general question then around yeah. pricing? So let's say it's a 25 bed care home. Yeah. What would be an indicative cost? Um, so we'll be looking at about £13 a service user. Okay. Now that includes everything. We don't have additional um, packages. So you get the email, you get the rotoring, and you guys decide how much of it you want to use. All right. Yes. Okay. So so the provider can totally customise and say, actually, all I want to use is a care planning piece. Yeah. And maybe absolutely. the rostering. Don't yeah. want the HR or payroll element. Yeah, absolutely. But they can fine. just turn those pieces off, can they? It, yeah, don't even have to turn it off. You just don't go in and look at it. <laughs> Oh, OK. So, so you yeah. do get the whole package. You, you, get, just, you get the whole you package. You can just yeah. populate 
what you want to. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I mean, some of our customers will start with care planning. That's absolutely fine. You know, mm-hmm. they'll get that up and running, and then they'll go, okay, well, let's try, let's do the email next, and then later they may add the rotor. So it, you know, you don't have to go all out with the system. If you want to start with one area, then go into another area. That's fine. Yeah. So you can build. Yeah. yeah build, build as you go. Okay. Yeah. Is there any training available? Does that come as part of the implementation? Yes. Yeah, so we support you with four weeks implementation. Um, the sessions are carried out via Microsoft Teams and they are recorded. You will also get your own implementation specialist. Now that will be your go to throughout your implementation. So it's not like you're going to have different members of staff on every session. You, you're going to get a, a really good rapport with your implementation specialist. Um, we provide four weeks included. OK, there are additional packages if they want to purchase additional packages. It all depends on how much of the system you want to use. If you yeah. want to use it for care planning, four weeks is fine. If you want to use it for EMAR, HR, then I would suggest you purchase additional training packages. Right. OK, so so that training is so, so is that implementation on the ground? Like you say, you've got the implementation specialist or is yeah. it all done remotely? All done remotely through Microsoft Teams. OK. okay. Um, which is great because then the sessions can be recorded. So you've actually got a copy. Yeah. And and I guess that it builds in some flexibility as well, does it? Absolutely. So you'll have four hours implementation um, between you and your implementation specialist. You decide when those when those meetings are going to suit you guys. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll work around you. OK. Um, and regarding the training, I know you said that's done um, yeah. virtually. Is there is there a bit of a training package on Care Beans? So, you know, just little training sessions or videos or anything as well? We're Care Control, not Care Beans. Sorry, I'm Care Control. I do apologise. Sorry, I can see Care Control at the bottom. I know. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. Um, so what we have on our main system is we have um, a, a Git help guide. Um, if if customers click on there, they've got 24 seven help. Um, it's an online manual with photos of, of how, you know, if they've forgotten how to add a service user, for example, they yeah. can just go online and you've got your step by step guides. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just just on that, I know you said just an indicative cost, £13 per service yeah. user. Does that include devices or will can providers use their own devices if they're if they're, um, you know, carers have got, you know, their own phones, using yeah, their own so, phones and tablets. Yeah, so for domiciliary, obviously, if staff are use, have got their own phones, then you can use your own staff phones for that. Mm. Um, we can provide devices. We do have an equipment brochure for customers to look at. You don't have to provide, uh, you don't have to purchase the devices from us. You can go out and yeah. um, independently purchase them. OK, so it's just downloading the app. It's downloading it up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any more in the chat. Does anyone else have any other questions or would like to put the hand up? Barbara. You're on mute at the moment, Barbara. Can you hear me? Oh, I yes. Hi, hi, Barbara. Hi. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Um, uh, my name's Lizzie. Hi, I have a very Lizzie. bad habit of forgetting to introduce myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> hi, Lizzie. I think your your package is quite good and uh, quite simple to implement. Uh, my question, I, I, I know you said the price for the domiciliary, uh, for the uh, home care. What about the domiciliary? Yeah, so we'd be looking at similar. Um, obviously, with regards to domiciliary, um, you guys go up and down quite regularly. We price per service user, OK? Mm-hmm. Um, we don't price per staff, uh, so you can have it downloaded as many times as you want to. The only area that we price for is per service user, so it would depend on how many service users you have. OK, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. No worries, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think Ranjit's asked a similar question. Would it be £13 for Dom Care as well? Yeah. I you just said it depends on the number of service users. Depends on the number of service users, yeah. Um, so I think Ranjit is asking, so could you give us some sort of indicative idea of what that range might potentially be for Dom Care, if that's yeah. possible? 
well, I can try to off the top of my head. I've left mm. my sheet of paper in the it's other It's only room. indicative. Just, yeah, yeah, so we're looking at £13. I think that's up to sort of like 30 service users. After 30 service users, the price drops to, um, to £11 a service user. And then when you go over, I think it's about 50, it drops down again. So for domiciliary, the more service users you have, the, the less the price per service user would be. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Lucy. I hope that answers your question, Ranjit. Yeah, perfect. I've got a thumbs up. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. That's all right. No, you're very welcome. Lovely to meet you all. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Damish, was, I don't think, is there anything you wanted to, to ask? No, we let no, Lucy no. Go? That, was, no? that was really comprehensive. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, Lovely. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Enjoy Lucy. the rest of your day, guys. <laughs> Bye. You. Bye. Okay, so I think we've just got a couple of minutes left um, for our last presentation of this session before we have a break, um, which is support.